Hello and welcome to the Build with Bear Workshop. My name is Pat Bear. I'm here to build a model kit and hang out with you. And I'm going to throw the Bear Cave, the Lego, the site, the moat in the chat. If you're currently a subscriber, you can reply with those emotes. If you're not currently a subscriber, or if you never have, or if you never will be, uh, you can use other people's emotes, like the universal emotes, some other streamers emotes that you like, or you can just say hi, or you can choose to just be silent. We're waiting for more friends to come in. This is what we're fashionably late, but I wanted to get started because... Uh, I'm just happy to be here. Just happy to be here. Uh, you know, streamed on Wednesday with, with model kits, finished up some model kits. Uh, Thursday, no stream. Saturday, no stream. Tonight, streaming again. So excited to be back. Um, also was happy yesterday afternoon to get back to South Carolina from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, USA, uh, where I was there for uh, uh, PAX Unplugged. I got in on Thursday, hung out. Got my stuff together. Lashbrook is here. Hello, Lashbrook. Uh, and then on Friday, did the show floor stuff. Ran into just about everyone I wanted to see. Went to a panel, hung out, played some games. Saturday, ran into the two other people that I was still looking for. Had like a couple meetings that were good. Um, ate a cheesesteak. Played more games. Did my own panel. Um... Uh, played a game uh, with some people. One person who was a guest at the panel uh, invited me uh, to a hotel lobby to play a game, which is, if you are going to ask someone that you don't know, but you like them from a thing, hey, we're all going to go play Carcassonne. Do you want to come play Carcassonne with us? And I would say, you do the follow-up, which is what I did, which was, wh where are you playing that? Because uh, I thought maybe they were going to go and... and borrow the game from the game library and play at the con because it's open till midnight and they were like oh we're, we hotel lobby there's plenty of space at our hotel we, we've been playing every night and i was like that's exactly what i want to do i want to go to your hotel lobby and not a hotel room because i'm a 41 year old person and i don't go to strangers hotels rooms uh alone particularly especially when i'm one of several people that there, there's several people there that all know each other and don't know me. That's a weird power dynamic that I'm not interested in. Uh, that was really nice. And then Sunday, woke up, got out of my Airbnb, went to the airport, came back to South Carolina. And then, uh, as many of you may know or may remember, uh, up until right before I left, I was staying in the office here at the house because of the uh, bedroom that I'm back in, uh, my uh, aunt and uncle were staying in. And so I, all my stuff was in there and I, cause they had, they stayed one day longer than me. So I had to move all the stuff back in here, uh, yesterday. And I'm pretty much set up where I want it. The overhead may need to be adjusted. This camera might actually be a little off, but, uh, Lester says, judging from your Twitter, it seems like you had a lot of fun. I did have a lot of fun and we'll talk about that tonight. That'll probably be the, the bulk of the non, um, manga conversation because no anime talk tonight. I am still behind on the Faraway Paladin. I am now two episodes behind. Because yesterday and today, I did not have time to get caught up. Uh, so I will talk about that in the future. But yeah, I had a good time. Um, uh, some folks will know that I did indeed paint. We'll look at the overhead as well. Um, I painted a Warhammer fig. Because uh, they had like a painting station uh, set up for a lot of people. Socially distanced, which was nice. With all the paints you need. And they had primed all of these, so they, they were all primed and ready to go. Uh, so you don't have to worry about primer and letting it dry. And I will look at it in the over. Like I said, I get it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not buying paint. I'm not going to be painting in this room because I sleep here. I'm not going to get paints. not going to get into painting anything. But I get why people like it. I especially, especially. Maybe I would get into it as a hobby that I would do on my own time, in my own way, in like the garage. I'm definitely not going to do it on stream because it was relaxing and I can't make that. It would be not that for with all of y'all who I am grateful that you give me your time and your energy and your attention. But uh, I can't I wouldn't be able to do this with y'all uh, looking over my shoulder. Yeah. In a manner of speaking, of course. Um, hello, welcome, welcome everybody that's here. We're gonna we're gonna hang out for a few more minutes here in just the intro portion. We'll get to building real soon. 
um, because uh, we're starting a new kit tonight. I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, uh, Gundam Breaker Battle Lock is a new uh, a show with a focus uh, in many ways, um, building quite a decent high grade. Yeah, I'm excited about it. Um, they're, they're looking at international. They're looking at like an integrated thing. Like these kits uh, debuted here in the U.S. at Target as Target exclusives. Um, uh, the uh, animated series has a uh, like uh, it has this kind of like kind of build fighters but also kind of build divers, like somewhere in between. Um, but it focuses on your own Gunpla. Uh, set in America, too. Yes, yeah, the, the U.S. Championships um, was a, a thing mentioned in the first episode. Um, but uh, one of the elements of it is taking uh, classic model kits, and maybe not so classic model kits, and kind of meshing them together. So we'll be working on tonight the uh, Live Lance Heaven high grade. Uh, the Live Lance Heaven is mostly a death scythe with a paint job to go for the angel instead of the devil theme, as well as a lance, uh, and it's the heaven instead of hell. Um, but it also has the Versago? Yeah, Versago. Uh, like the head tooling is a little Versago, and a little bit of the chest is Versago, and that is a very cool kit um uh the gunpla from uh gundam x and here's the thing folks anytime gundam x gets a reference i'm happy because it is the uh like the black sheep of the gundam universe so anytime they get even the the minute reference i am pleased um yes and it also has some beam effects yeah it uh our uh our weapons here, our blades here, have a real, like, is this, like, glitter? It's got, like, a glitter effect to it, which is very nice. Um, uh, even the, the re you know, there's the sprue. Very good. We'll look at that oh, as we go there. But uh, I'm going to retweet my tweet, and we'll get into the uh, the model kit building here. Um, the hope, my personal hope, is that the fact that they made this kit means that there will be a new high grade of the death scythe hell in the near future um because this is not like a retooling of just the death scythe they went with the hell so and we haven't seen that so i'm hoping we'll see that soon because i like building death scythe in the stream and of course this is a death scythe variant um yeah it already says it on the runner yeah so that's the thing right um uh, we're looking, that's looking like it's going to be a thing. So that would be great. Who knows if that was going to be like out for everybody or if that's going to be like a premium thing or whatever. Um, but it's still encouraging because I do like to build that size. Now that death side clear, no word right now anyway, if that's going to be anywhere but Gundam base. And I would love that to be something that I could get for not too much money, but who knows? Anyway, like I said, uh, this was my first time doing... Hey, Lord Crashington, welcome. This is my first time doing um, uh, this weekend at PAX Unplugged. I, I did my first paint job. Um, some things I think were pretty... I think I did pretty well. The weathering, I did a little bit of like dry black brush here, like wipe off after um, once it had dried. Uh, I, I tried weathering and I think that worked well. Uh, I tried to use some green, like, effects paint on the blade. I think if I hadn't painted the blade red, it would have shown up better if it had just been on the primer. Um, uh, that is not great. It is very not noticeable that I've done that work. Um, but I, I went for it. Um, and then this, like, paint that... Uh, this was originally blue, like a dark blue, and then I went over it with this, like, um, rusted yellow um that really just changed uh how everything looked on here and i was very pleased with that um again i don't think this is going to be a thing that i do on my own but at conventions if there is a place to go and do this i would do it again um i didn't want to go back you know a second time um they had other fig figures as well uh and i'm I'm relatively proud of the, the painting here going with the silver with the black highlights for the uh, the stand. Uh, I did miss like a stone. There's like a stone there. 
that I didn't hit with the black. But other than that, I was pretty happy with it. And I was like, oh, I'll, I'll take that home. Um, now paint Gunpla. No, I mean, that's the thing, right? First of all, I don't have the, this setup for it. We use the markers, as you can see here. Uh, here, we're going to be using gray marker for the white, uh, black marker for the gold. And there's a very small amount of gray that'll be noticeable. And we'll probably hit that with black as well. Um, and there is yellow, but I included that. That's in within the gold. I'll be using the, the black paint and pat. Indeed. Um, uh, but yeah, so so we got a, a few colors here. Look, uh, can you use brown on the yellow and gold? So I could use the brown marker for that, but this is my own personal preference. I prefer using black on gold and yellow. Um, uh, I like using brown on red. That's just for my own preference uh, on how things look. Um, uh, oh, Lord Crashing wants me at the ska button. I will in just a second. I want to say we do have some stickers here. And of course, a lot of that yellow that you're going to see inside of the, you don't, you don't see it in the production photo, but um, inside of the uh, your cloaking device, we are going to be using a lot of this yellow stickers, which it's a high grade, right? You can't, can't really do it. Anyway, um, uh, I like the beady little eyes. Yes. The, the, the head is nice, uh, depending on the yellow. I hear you. Uh, I am going to hit the ska button here because the, the ska points were redeemed. Thank you for using your channel points for something silly, like me pressing a button on my stream deck. Um, yeah, okay. So... Yeah, the, we got the white here. This is very, very nice, clean white. I think the gray is going to look uh, excellent on that marker on there. Um, yeah, the the head is kind of busy, uh, which I which I don't dislike. Of course, you know, well, the majority, not majority, a good portion of stickers will be on that as well. Um, and I guess we'll just get into it. We're starting with the body, which is the oh, the one other thing I forgot to mention about this kit that I like is we got ourselves some gold poly caps. And I, I really like that. Um, I think that is an unnecessary. Uh, oh, the Helios. Yes. Uh, yeah, I'll mention that too. Uh, I really like how unnecessary it is to have these be gold. It's a nice little touch. I appreciate that. Um, and this kit, because the customization is the thing they would like to do. They're like, hey, you can get the Helios and use the chest and the arms and like mix and match. You could like separate them and they'll tell you how to do. They're basically being like, Here's a way to easily kit bash a thing. If you want, you could just kit bash it like this, um, which I appreciate. Um, and they're like, and you can have the gun from from that that kit. And it's like, okay, I mean, sure. I do have some breakers. We haven't built any of them. Uh, the Goof Custom Crimson, or yeah, uh, the Goof Crimson uh, Custom. We got that. I've got the Wing Gundam Sky Zero and what else is in the backlog from that that might be it i might just have those two. Oh no i have the um uh, uh what what is the name of that one uh sorry I, here. So I got a few of them uh the blazing gundam i have the blazing gundam which is basically uh instead of uh uh you know burning fingers it's got a shining kick and that's just silly in a way that I enjoy. I enjoyed that that's just got like an effects part foot. Um, yeah, so the, the, the I had to get that goof. One, because it's a goof and I, I enjoy those very much. And two, because that red is just beautiful. Let me get a photo. Of it. I have that here somewhere, right? Uh, I think I have it up here. Ooh, I don't. Don't have that. Easy, I don't have that easily switchable here. So sorry. Uh, anyway, whatever. Um, that kit comes with die options. Uh, words maybe. Hi, howdy to you. Welcome. All right, let's get into this kit. We're gonna uh, we're gonna start putting this thing together. Um, uh, and I'm gonna talk to you about Pax Unplugged, which was in Philadelphia this past weekend. Uh, I got arrived on Thursday, left on Sunday. Did not go to the show floor on Sunday. Uh, my plan was just to do two days of uh, of the convention because it was my first convention since PAX East 2020. And I uh, I didn't want to, like, lose my voice or my mind. 
uh, the whole idea of like going to the airport felt weird. Going to a convention felt weird. I was happy to go. Uh, some logistics. Um, I stayed in an Airbnb that was about five minutes away from the convention center, which was very convenient and nice. Um, uh, masks were you were, were worn the entire time. Everyone had to wear masks. Uh, everyone from you know event staff to panelists, all that. I believe because it was so distant from the audience that the main stage had the option to remove their masks. Everyone was okay with that because they weren't near staff. Um, uh, but I was not on the main stage. So that didn't, uh, uh, that didn't apply to me. Um, uh, to get in, you had to be vaccinated, have proof of vaccination. Um, I believe originally it was proof of vaccination or a negative COVID test. Uh, but I think that is now just proof of vaccination. Um, uh, so, uh, basically you got like an app thing to register, then you got a wristband that you need to have on and you could get it each day if you needed to. It wasn't like a one-time wristband. If you've lost it, you're screwed. Um, and yeah, uh, socially distance was, was definitely like, not like the, it, it was a good theory and it was a little hard to do in practice. Um, I, most of the panel rooms were, were telling people like, hey, feel free to sit apart because also uh, PAX Unplugged, not the biggest uh, uh, panel culture. Uh, my panel was on Saturday and it had an okay number of people. But the room was too big for the amount of people that came, but the people that came had a good time, which is the thing I'm actually most interested in. And then having a good panel and then below that is having... Uh, a, a a full audience or a very full audience um but yeah i'm more interested in doing good time i had a good time doing it um uh at least a couple of people were were saying like pat usually really you promoted it but you usually really promote your guests you really go out of your way to do that and you didn't this time uh and the uh, the reason for that was a simple one it was very difficult to book guests for this show uh, I was either booking people who had prior commitments in the convention, uh, or I also ran into an issue. Okay, so why is this? This this goes here. That I know that. And then this goes like this. How do you connect? Connect there. You connect. You connect there. You do connect there. Okay, I'm figuring this out. Popping these. Popping this. Polycap back in here. Um. Anyway, uh, it was hard to book guests. I eventually did. Uh, and I, had, I enjoyed my guests a lot. And then a thing that I have always had in my back pocket that this was the first time that I ever actually uh, went and pulled the trigger on um, was the idea to uh, heavily involve the audience. Um, you may know, folks that have seen my panels in the past, that I don't usually ever have audience participation outside of cheering and booing for, you know, like wrestling, the wrestling things, or, you know, uh, I think at Improvised Postmortem, like the first couple times I did it, I took like a suggestion from, from the audience for like my, uh, like, uh, example one. I didn't do, you know, I haven't done that particularly in a while, but yeah, it, it was, um, it was, it ended up being a good show and I enjoyed doing it, but I was like pretty nervous about doing a panel in front of a live audience. It has been a while since I've been in front of a live audience. I've done a couple panels, but they were pre-recorded. Um, so this was like me getting out there, kind of like talking to people, and uh, I was happy, happy out there to see see people do a panel, get the ring rust off a little bit. I, I was I was uh, genuinely happy and i didn't lose my voice which is always nice uh as of right now i do not have any symptoms of anything that would make me worried uh so thank you i appreciate that um and i also um i didn't catch a cold because uh hey colds are going to be bad this winter they already are um but it's going to be bad because uh just people weren't exposed to like simple viruses last year so i think the it's cold season is going to be um rough for people this time around uh we thought about going to la gundam competition oh okay 
yeah, I mean, I think people are getting back out there at things, and I, um, um, every decision made to to go to a con or an event or a you know something with sports or a concert or a wrestling show, all those things are decisions that like my only thing for folks is, um, just you know make sure this is something you want to do. Like really consider, really think about these things if you're going to do it. Like don't take things lightly, uh, especially, you know, cause it's your, it's your safety, uh, and your health. Uh, you just got your third shot. Hell yeah. Well, I'm glad you got that. Uh, and old Lashbrook said, I need to rewatch it. I kind of fell asleep. Yeah. So I had a good time. Um, I ran into just about everyone I wanted to see. There was like somebody that I was only there on Friday and I missed, but that's okay. We will catch up. Um, but yeah, overall I had a good time. So what did I play? Well, a funny thing is the very first thing that I played at PAX Unplugged, the tabletop and card game convention, like Focus and you know LARPing and uh, and Dungeons Dragons and other TTRPGs, uh, I played a arcade game. Uh, Killer Queen is a what is it's a five on five at most because you get the double cabinet, so you know like X Men style double cabinet two monitor game. Um, where you are, it's basically Joust, but it's even more of a strategy game than Joust. Um, as I said, five on five competitive game. Um, and there is a, there, there are only so many of these machines out in, in the world. There is one here in, uh, there in Philadelphia. Uh, and so, uh, they apparently had reached out saying like, hey, can we find a spot for it? We'll bring it. We'll maintain it. We'll keep it clean and all that. And that happened. So, hey, there, you know, if, if people really wanted to play and I played Killer Queen, that was really fun. That was a fun, good start to my like uh, weekend. So I was happy to play that because I've always wanted to because um, there there was one or still is a full setup in the Kickstarter office in Brooklyn. And I have been to the Kickstarter office for various reasons, but I never went when I had like enough people around to play. Um, oh yeah, there was a line at, at Pack South when it was there. Yeah, um, yeah, I've, I've never committed like fully to get together to do it, and it was just there, and the there was a spot. Like I walked up, and then like three other people walked up, and then suddenly there were ten people, and we played, and it was really fun. Um, Let's see. Uh, all right. So, so this gray is almost like a purple uh, or this white. So it's, there's there's pure white. And then there's this like gray that's almost got a little hue of purple to it. So I'll be hitting. And then there's like a darker gray. So this purple I'm going to hit with with uh, with a gray marker like the white. I think that's going to look good. And then the actual gray I'll hit with. Uh, with black but yeah this i think will be it's still light enough that i think gray is going to be the right color for it i'm just going to hit this before i connect it because it'll be easier to get my marker in there and as always i'm doing the quick and dirty method where i'm just hitting it and then wiping it away with an with my eraser just to get in there get get a little little paint just so it you know nothing nothing fancy nothing delicate I'm not using the the little gel pen things or whatever the filler pens or anything like that just standard gundam markers go in there clean things up a little bit make it look nice and just stand out a little bit all right and then i can pop that in there and we are almost done with our chest once we panel line it we'll be done uh nothing wrong with quick and dirty for a fast uh yeah no totally that i mean that's the thing right like I'm not looking, yeah, I'm not looking to make any, like, this isn't a statement piece model kit. I mean, it'll be out for a little while on display when I'm done with it because I like death sites quite a bit. I also uh, am probably going to eventually make a YouTube video uh, uh, where I'm, like, comparing and contrasting the various battle log kits when I have them all built. I'll probably take a look at that. So I, I at least want to keep it looking good because it'll be on camera. But I'm not losing my mind over it. You know what I mean? Um, you have some tentative trips next summer. Really hope and go on. I, I hope so uh, for you as well, Lashbrook. Okay, so 
Um, what was the first card game or tabletop game that I played? It was Ashes Reborn. Now, full disclosure, I have never played Ashes before. This is the uh, re-release slash update. It's like the modern update of Ashes. So it's Ashes Reborn. Um, it was, there's cards and also dice. And the demo was very good, but I played it at like 11 a.m. on Friday. And I don't remember anything about it. I wish I had a better memory of it, but it like in one and out, you know, in one out one, basically. Um, the art was really striking, but there's also, it seemed like there was a lot of fucking lore to that uh, story. And there was like, I don't know, there was somebody at the table with me who was just nodding their head after everything that was, was like really like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yes. So I don't know. Uh, the, one of the reasons I was drawn to it was the fact that it was from um, Plaid Hat Games. And so, of course, everybody, not of course, but everybody uh, in the booth who was working had a plaid hat on, but they also had matching plaid masks. And I thought that was very smart and very cool. So I was drawn to their uh, table and then I was like, well, I guess I'll try this out. Uh, I'm glad I did because I did enjoy it. I just don't remember anything about it. Um... What else did I play? Oh, uh, so shortly after that, I got invited to uh, to go to the cardboard classic, classic cardboard room, which is like old school board games, just old school stuff. Like it's a silly, it's, it's a silly idea that exists. I like that it exists. Anyway, they every year have a, uh, a VCR TV combo and a selection of VHS games. Games where you popped in the uh, tape uh, and played along, and it affected the game. Um, so I had like tweeted about how they had. I uh, last year, last the last year I went, which was two years ago. Um, I played the Star Trek uh, interactive VHS game, um, and they had the Star Wars this year, and I've never played that, and I don't know if I even knew it existed. Anyway. Uh, it's not good. Um, we ended up just fast forwarding through the tape to look at it and be like, oh, let's just see what this, let's just see what other scenes are going to happen in here. Um, I would say you can, someone must have did, multiple people have digitized it, I'm sure. So I would say just go and watch that in the future. That's all you need. You don't need to play that. Don't track down. Uh, yes, uh, totally. Um, Mouse, uh, uh, to be fair, most VHS games are cheesy at best. Yes, totally. I still genuinely think that the very first Atmosphere game is bad, but in a very good way. And I do think that the Star Trek game um, isn't terrible. Uh, it's weird. It's a, like very, I think, strange, but I still enjoy it. Or enjoyed it, I should say. Um... Okay, so then back down to the show floor, walking around. There's a company. It has Japan and it, it's not Japan. I think it's Japan anime. They're they are a. Uh, I don't know if they publish like they go for licenses or if they just like find games that have been made for anime licenses and then you know distribute them in English. I'm not sure what their deal is, but all their games are anime games. Um, and they have their Cowboy Bebop Space Serenade, which is a competitive deck builder where you sometimes can work, comp uh, you can work together, but the end goal is to be the winner. So it is a competitive game with some like cooperative elements. Uh, the art is straight out of the anime and looks great. Uh, you got four characters. You're all bounty hunters and you're all uh, one of the is Ed is the fourth. Uh, not, 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 your, not the corky, but you're all bounty hunters and you're, you know, you're working on your, you know, against each other. You're trying to, I believe the game ends when you either capture vicious or vicious escapes. I, I, I don't quite remember. Um, it's, hmm, what, how do I say this? If someone I knew owned that game and we were at their place and they were like, hey, does anyone want to play Cowboy Bebop Space Serenade? I would say, sure. 
I would not go out of my way to purchase it. I wouldn't like, I wouldn't be the one recommending that everyone come over and play it. Uh, but I would play it again because I did not dislike it. Uh, let me just get a little, little bit of marker on here before I put the stickers on and maybe put marker on the stickers or something. I'm just going to hit this real quick. Kind of hard to see where these lines are. So I'm just kind of scribbling and then I'll just erase all over it and clean it up. Um, yeah, so that game was fine, but like I said, I'm not going to go out of my way to play it again. Uh, but it was kind of neat that it exists. I'll take it. All right, so I'm going to do some stickers here. I got three stickers to apply. Um, I've got the two eye stickers. They're individual eye stickers. And then I'm going to just do the sticker that goes here on the um, uh, on a crown. I will first panel line the crown, and then I will uh, apply the sticker. Do that like that. Put a little black on there. I think that's going to look real good on this. Um, sticker's going to go right there. Uh, let's see. What else did I play? Oh, um, so I didn't play this, but I want to talk about it. Uh, in the far corner of the convention of the uh, the show floor, I just was hearing like the only thing I could describe it as at for a convention is like esports noise, like you know, booming speakers and like. Just like laser lights and and like a, a roped off area, like a, a an area you couldn't see into because there were all these like you know like curtained off, and it was like what's going on over there? And so I uh, approached it to find out, and it was motherfucking laser tag. That's right, it was War Warhammer 40k inspired themed laser tag. They apparently whoever was doing this uh, from you know that Warhammer. The Warhammer people must have, you know, licensed out or marketing or somebody. They have uh, weapons that look like the guns from 40K that are laser, they're, they're 3D printed and have the laser components in them. Um, and it was like a control point style game. Uh, now, it did cost money, so I did not do it. Um, it was free if you have a Warhammer Plus subscription, which now I know that there's a thing called Warhammer Plus. Uh, with monthly subscription, you can go free, or if you didn't have that, uh, so they were like 40 pounds. Yeah. Um, if you didn't have, uh, the subscription, uh, it was apparently a small fee, but I did not investigate. Also, I'm not going to run around playing laser tag. Like I got my, my body was already like, what's happening right now. You're walking so much on concrete. Uh, Hey, here's a rant for you. This is an important public service announcement. If you are having a table at a convention, you got a booth, you got you got just like a folding table. Get yourself some foam mats or carpeting because you can't just blind faith believe that a convention is going to uh like a convention center is going to have carpet down for you or mats down for you look should they oh, they sh definitely should but you have to take the initiative you got to get yourself you know a bunch of those pads you know like the, the inner clock to inner lock together you got to get yourself uh just like something you roll out and then throw away later if you got to do that whatever it is you have to do you got to do it because absolutely uh my feet were killing me from walking around on that concrete floor uh, and the the convention should should do it, but they don't always, and you can't risk it. Uh, sorry, I gotta get this sticker on here. It really, for whatever reason, this eye sticker really stuck to my exacto, and did not want to come off. So I had to uh, work it over, and now I gotta get it lined up. Okay. Uh, so yeah, that's my public service announcement. Put fucking carpets down, assholes. What, what the hell? Um, so yeah, so I wasn't gonna do laser tag because my uh, my feet really hurt. Anyway, uh, what else? Um, oh, I played for the first time ever. Uh, uh, Crokinole. 
Uh, Crokinole, I have seen people play. Loading Grey Run has played it several times. They own an incredibly lovely board. Um, it is basically shuffleboard, but like in a, in a big circle, like a big wooden circle where there's a hole in the middle and you flick from the outside and you want, like shuffleboard, you want to like knock people out of, out of points and also get your own points um, and their strategy. Uh, but unlike a shuffleboard where you've got your, uh, you know, your stick and you're, you know, sliding it down, um, this one, you flick, you got to like flick these like discs, these like hard discs. And you got to flick them around. And it hurts after a while. Uh, especially if you are like unprepared for it to hurt. Um, I played, uh, it was a four person game. And I was paired with someone that knew exactly what the fuck they were doing. And it was great because we won despite my worst efforts. Uh, we still won. And that rules. Because it is, it is nice to win a game. Uh, but yeah, uh, I would play it again. Uh, I don't know anyone with a board, but I, I would definitely try that out again. That was very fun. Um, it's similar in that it is, it has its roots in let's, let's do some kind of variant on a classic, uh, game. Uh, I want to tell you about Clask. Um, Clask is like table hockey, but instead of move like to move your puck around or to move your 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 person around uh underneath the table so the table's like this you're under here moving around a magnet that will move some like a slider around on top of the table and it's um fun it, it's pretty damn fun i would say i would describe it as like um frantic at some parts um but it, it it's a good time um yeah, I, I would definitely play that again. Uh, uh, I should have gone back and played it uh, one more time, but I, I had fun with it. Um, uh, yeah, the, the, and then I kept hearing people like, oh, yeah, I got this. I got that in like 2019. Oh, Pat, you never heard of it? And I'm like, no, I never heard of this game. But I'm glad that people I know on the people, some people that I know on Twitter were like really into it. It's like, that's cool. Um Let's see. All right, I got to get this tiny sticker in. All right. Tiny sticker has been applied. I got to get like some toothpicks. That's what I really should have for for this this kind of application. It's just like really thin toothpicks. I should add that to my toolkit. Uh, hey, Aristofan. Aristofan's here saying... Uh, I recently picked up a copy of Clask for a family member for Christmas. Looking forward to trying it out. I had a really good time with it. It's like easy to pick up and pretty fun. And I think like, yeah, I, I, I thought it was a good time. So I hope you have fun with it. Um, What else did I play? Oh, yeah. then that, Like I said, the last thing that I played was uh, Saturday night after my panel. I like I talked to some people after, had a good chat uh, with a couple, couple people. And then somebody invited me uh, to their hotel lobby to play Carcassonne with friends. Uh, and I played that, which I, is a game that I have played quite a bit and enjoy playing. So that was fun to go and do that with some people. And I hadn't done a lot of like hotel hangouts, which was good because I was in an Airbnb and it was nice to like not be around, you know, people just kind of decompress. But after the panel and since I was like, well, I'm leaving tomorrow so I can like be out. It was nice to just to see some people and hang out uh, a little bit longer. Like, it, that was good. That felt good. Um, Lasbrook says, I need to go to the post office tomorrow to pick up my copy of the of the Thing board game, which I first played at Pac last Pack South. Back then, it was very expensive, but it's just, uh, oh, had a, a print this year. Yes, I played that at Pax Unplugged, and I was surprised at how good that game was. Because, hey, like, let's be honest, like, licensed property games are real hit and miss. Like, um, the thing is really good. Now, the big trouble in Little China, not as good. Not as good. I want it, I want it to be good. It's not as good. I've, I've played that. Uh, I tried that a few times, and that was not enjoyable. 
All right, let's panel line this before we put, oh, well, let's see. Well, first we'll see how this looks with this because we're almost done with the head here. Yeah, all right. I'm just going to take this off and we'll just like, this is screaming for, for some markers. So we'll just hit this real quick and easy. Um, let's see, other things. I saw a lot of people um, that I wanted to see, which is good. Like I said, I, I ended up with a couple of meetings. So am I going to other conventions in, uh, in 2022? Probably. Uh, I don't want to commit to anything right now. I will be committing to something soon, I'm sure. Uh, I did have a meeting with somebody who I have worked events for in the past, and we've talked about some East Coast convention stuff for me to work boots for, not as a performer uh, or presenter, but as a uh, employee. So we're we're talking about that. Uh, no, nothing set in stone there. Can't, you know, no comment on that. Uh, as far as PAXs, um, I have interest in going to PAX East. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to go, but I have interest in going. Uh, because it's in April, which is months away. Um, and this feels like the convention that some of my friends are going to be going to that I, that I miss dearly and would like to see feel like that's going to be uh, a weekend with a lot of people that I like going. So I am strongly considering making the trip to, to Boston. Now, that's going to be a hard trip to do. Used to be I just got on a train. It took, a, you know, three to four hours, depending on what train I took. Not a big deal. This is going to be a longer trip. There's going to be a flight. I've never been to the Boston airport before. Uh, so that'll be interesting. Uh, and I'm, I'm, like I said, I am strongly considering it. I don't, I, I, you know, I can't say for certain that's going to happen, but I'm strongly considering taking the plunge and making it happen. Um, because I miss, you know, seeing people, I miss hanging out. I miss doing panels. Um, it's nice to like go and, and see people and whatever, like, I got a few more followers here on the old channel from doing that panel, uh, you know, just two nights ago. Uh, a few folks that didn't know who I was now know who I am, which is really nice to, excuse me, get that convention bump. I appreciate that. You know, people that are new, it's always nice to have new friends come in. Um, but yeah, uh, I don't know. Uh, and as far as the panel goes, was very happy to do it. Of course, I'll have a link to it when I do my uh, boss of the calls. I'll talk about, uh, I'll talk about, you know, like the link to the actual panel and all that. Um, but yeah, uh, my Airbnb really reminded me of New York. It being that it was like small and like the room was clean, but like you could tell that someone had lived there a very long time and was like used to it. Um, uh, you know, happy, happy to be there. As I said, the best part of that was that it was unbelievably, holy shit, this is so close to the convention center. Close. It was so nice. It was like five, six minute walk. Even when it was like rainy uh, on Saturday, I was just like, whatever, this is fine. And it was, it was totally great. Um, but yeah, it, it was uh, It was totally uh, like nice to have a place. Um I wish the bed had been bigger. That's a, you know, that, I mean, that's a real thing because, uh, it was, it was a little small, <laughs> but the room, the room was held together. The big problem was that the Wi-Fi there was garbage. It was unbelievably terrible Wi-Fi to the point where, uh, on Saturday, I didn't really have to be at the convention center for anything, uh, in the morning, but I went there early so that I could use the Wi-Fi, just like the convention set up by like friends of PAX or whatever, Wi-Fi, because I had some stuff I needed to get done, which is why I didn't put the panel up until today because um, it would have I wouldn't have had time on Sun Saturday night to download, uh, to rip the video, uh, do a little edit, and then just upload it to my YouTube. Uh, in case you don't know, um, there, if I had a good connection 
at Twitch to get this done, I could get a download link for the VOD. But since it's through Twitch, or it, uh, it since the convention viewing on Twitch is contractors that are hired, and I don't know if they're hired by Reed or if they're hired by Twitch, but either way, um, like I don't have access to the uh, you know the, the the recordings the the vods, so I use a program called Twitch Leecher, which basically you put in a link to the video, and then uh, you can do start time and end time because like they just upload it as an eight eight hour video, like whatever the the broadcast day was. Um, so I was like, okay, well. I want to uh, I want to um, I want to get that so I had to download that and I did that last night here because there was no way I was gonna be able to do that um, at uh, PAX East one year I ended up doing that wall tabling at uh, in Bandland. I ripped the panel like literally that had happened like two hours before and just did all the work for it right there and that was very convenient all right we got more stickers to apply. Uh, hey, uh, Infinite Soup, welcome. Uh, I'm doing all right. I think my voice just now is starting to be a little strained from the weekend. But the fact that I, considering I talked to so many different people and I even did a panel, uh, the, the fact that my voice held out this long, I was really, really happy with. Um, because, you know, it's just not used to that. I'm used to like, uh, I've talked to few people but i don't talk to a lot of people uh consistently so i did i do vocal warm-ups this weekend you bet your ass i did uh i had to do i had to get my warm-ups in uh it would have been foolish uh also thanks for putting up that post morning. well thank you uh very much for that i appreciate that you're welcome um yeah uh the the postmortem this year was the weirdest one i've ever done uh which is saying a lot because one time during a postmortem, uh, Kate Welch fell off the stage. And this one was weirder than that one. Uh, okay, this is the second weirdest one. The actual weirdest one uh, is the... because So Kate falling off the stage is third weirdest. This one is the second weirdest because it has so much audience particip participation. And that's weird for me. Uh, and the vibe was kind of odd, uh, but in a good, but in a fine way, not a good way, a fine way. Um, no, what was the weird one? Oh, uh, the weirdest one was the, the, uh, audio only, I believe. I don't believe that. I think the recording died, but the audio was good. So I have it up on my YouTube. I'm pretty sure it is one at the upright citizens brigade theater and it is comic book focused. And, um, Every single person that did it decided they were going to be a character. And only one of them decided, like, when they came, like, told me it beforehand. So I'd be like, and now welcome, Jeremy Bent. And then my friend Jeremy came up, and he was somebody that had written something, and he was playing a real person. And I had no idea that people were going to do that. And it was weird. It was very weird that people were like, oh, I also want to be a character instead of just me. And I was like, what? What's happening? That one was really weird. Um, that's why I now ask people to just play a version of themselves with their same name instead of playing a character because it's a lot for me to keep up with. Um, but yeah, this one was was a little bit a little bit of a weird one. Um, it was a hard to book panel, and so we ended up having some audience interaction, like quite a bit, which was fun. Um, I also haven't done improv. Like some of my friends have been doing improv. Like they did like Zoom improv like last year and this year. And now they're back to performing live. I didn't do any improv uh, since like, like two weeks before the pandemic. I did a jam. And so I got some improv in. Good evening, Dirty. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, so I didn't get, you know, it, I just haven't had the, the, the muscles. Virtual improv seems wild. It can be. I mean, you really needs to be like a small group. Because uh, some people ask, like, hey, Pat, how come at um, the uh, the PAX panels, you know, the online PAXs, you didn't do improvised postmortem? And the main reason was, well, one, I, I find that having an audience for that, like, laughter and response, like, really does help everyone, especially folks that are not super committed to doing improv outside of it. 
uh, you know, that, that are funny people and like are knowledgeable about games and trust me uh, to be on that panel. Um, but what I ended up happening was like, I just thought about doing it like for no one, like pre-taped and with like six or seven people. And I was like, nah, I'm not going to do that. I would have to really change how the panel runs and I didn't want to do that. So uh, it was nice getting back to it, but it was a, uh, it was a little nerve wracking. I was, I, I was happy with the results. Uh, and as I said, it is available on my YouTube and I will link to it in a couple of minutes when we talk, when I talk about ways you can support the channel. Um, so overall, I was happy, uh, happy with it. Um, I wish, you know, I wish I had a bigger live crowd, but um, we were up against Acquisitions Inc. Uh, featuring uh, Xavier Woods, AKA Austin Creed. And that was happening literally right next door to my panel. Uh, and that didn't sell out. So, because I was hoping for a little bit of runoff. Uh, instead, I just had unbelievably difficult competition. <laughs> and there was also like trivia happening in uh, in another panel room, but that was a smaller room. And I was like, I'm, I'm fine with competing with trivia, but I don't like competing with um, the king of the ring. Like, oh man, don't me don't put me opposite King Woods. I appreciate that they're like, this is a Saturday night show. And I'm like, that's cool. But yikes. Anyway, it was a good weekend. I was happy with it. Um, I didn't make it over to see the big Christmas tree in the Philadelphia Square. Um, because that was in the opposite direction of my Airbnb. And so I just never made it over there. But I would have. I would have. Otherwise, I'm gonna put these shoulders on because why not? We already have gotten our head and our chest and our shoulders done. Now the all that's left is the arms and the waist and the legs and the weapons and the backpack slash whatever. Um, I do like that they're just like. And now attach the arms together. Put the arms on there. I was like, that. Uh, this is nice. The color is really nice in these instructions. You love to see it, especially because these are kits that are in Target. Um, oh, oh, uh, related. Uh, the latest update from USA Gundam Store about the Barbatoris. Uh, let me let me find that. I got an email of that. A, a this is not a. It's shipping because I was like, oh, that would be great if you told me that it was shipping. It wasn't that I, I can't find the email or whatever, but it was basically like, hey, uh, like we're hopefully getting it soon. Sorry. That was basically their pre oh, yeah, pre-order arrival notice. Uh, uh, we want to thank you for your patience. This item we are waiting for the container of these to be delivered. And it's a little delayed from the rest of the battle log kits. Yeah, because like um, I, I, I pre-ordered this kit and the that kit separately i'm glad i did it separately uh because i wanted because they were supposed to come out in different months and for whatever reason the barbatoris just has not they didn't get their barbatoruses um and that's very frustrating because i would like to build that kit all right we got some gold here we'll do a we'll, we'll take a little of this gold out here for the right arm uh in a second and then we'll get into uh, we're going to take a pause for the cause, but I at least want to get some of this lovely gold out. Uh, so nice. Uh, B5, 9, and 8. Okay. Um, but yeah. Um, I mean, I have a good backlog right now. I really wanted, like, I wanted this. This was the kit that I was like, it got delayed for a month, and then... You know, you could find it in targets, which I didn't know when I pre-ordered that was going to be the thing. And I was like, I just want I want to build this Live Lands Heaven. It's a Death Scythe variant. I want to build the Death Scythe variant. Like, when am I getting this? And then eventually, uh, you know, it got delivered while I was away. Uh, your cow cow I pre-ordered was bumped from tomorrow to next Thursday so far. Uh, I mean, look. International shipping incidents continue to occur. I understand that. Uh, the thing I was, I, I felt blindsided by the fact that um, I didn't know that I could just get these in store, in, in Target. So that was 
frustrating, but I do like to pre-order. I do like to support business. You know, I'd rather support USA Gundam Store than Target. Uh, now, that being said, I did get a Christmas uh, wreath Lego set from Target, which is a Target exclusive. And also, while I was ordering that, I did get the uh, Tanjiro from uh, uh, from Demon Slayer. Um, that uh, that kit, the figure eyes kit. I got that too, because I was like, well, I should get that. Um, I haven't seen that in other retailers. And I was already, and also, that got me free shipping by buying that too. So it was worth it. Um, anyway, sorry, give me a second here. I'm going to hit the B right back in one second. Sorry about that. I might be developing a cold, which is awful. And I don't want, y'all know, I don't want that. Anyway, uh, I'm going to take a pause for the cause here. This is going to be a couple minutes where I talk to y'all about ways you can support the channel. All of the things I'm about to talk about here are optional. None of these things are things that I'm like, you gotta do this. But they are ways to support what I do so that I continue to um, uh, purchase model kits and build them on stream. You know, so uh, bear with me if you've been here before, if you're new. Again, I'm gonna talk, ways, talk about ways you can. You don't have to. First and foremost, throw the bear cave, the Lego. If you're a tier two, throw that scythe emote in the chat. Let the people know. Uh, being a subscriber gets you cool emotes. And subscribing is honestly like the easiest way to support what I do. Uh, and so I would really appreciate it uh, if you would consider becoming a subscriber. I gotta hit, sorry. There we go. Um, yeah, being a subscriber is an easy way to support me. Cash money prime a gaming token uh you could gift a sub you could be like sin and be a gift subber um uh which is great uh if you've been gifted a sub you can convert that to a regular subscription um and they won't charge you till that's over uh there's a new thing coming in and I, I know it's for partners and i think it's now for affiliates as well whereas if you choose not to renew a subscription you can tell me why and i'll say this right now you don't have to do that you just choose not to renew. If you've done it for seven months or two years or once, and you're like, I don't want to renew, that's your business. You don't have to tell me. I don't want to go look for it. Uh, but that's a new, it's like a brand new thing that just came out. And I was just like, oh, that doesn't seem like a thing I want. I would love them to work on other things that is not that. So becoming a subscriber, gifting yourself bits and coins, also always appreciate it. Uh, uh, those are ways to support what I do here. There's another way, and that is getting on my Patreon. Patreon.com slash Pat Bear. $1, $3, $5, $10 tiers. You get different rewards for each tier. I just started doing a thing uh, that I should have been doing for a while, which is uh, on the days that I post uh, videos, like today I posted uh, the um, Infrared Spells Mortem on my YouTube. I also sent out a Patreon post to my $1 and $3 saying like, hey, I put this video out. My $5, $10 got the video link last night because I they always get it at least a day early um, or a night early, I should say. So I'm going to start doing that now. So that also like, because that way you don't have to be on uh, Twitter to find out that I made a video, you know, and also that way $1 and $3 patrons get more posts, which is a nice, nice little thing. Um, but yeah, I have a Patreon. You could join that. Um, we're going to go through these hopefully very quickly and then get back to building and talking about some manga. Uh, that's the second hour. Uh, stream. Uh, I have a YouTube channel, which of course subscribing to YouTube is free and please subscribe youtube.com slash Pat Bear. Uh, that would be great. But you could also join it. Um, you could become a member and a, a couple dollars, uh, two dollars a month and you get my Wednesday videos on Tuesday. Um, but yeah, tomorrow you would get a video if you join that for two dollars a month. It's an option. It's something to think about. You could do it if you want to. Um, uh all right let's see other ways oh direct donations everything i make uh money wise through twitch direct donations uh patreon um uh, adsense and memberships on youtube goes to buying model kits and equipment uh the stream deck comes from your funds this kit was pre-ordered because i had a very good month and i was like i can do some pre-orders hell yeah um so even it be a one-time donation or a monthly donation, uh, that money goes to me continuing to do this cool shit. So I appreciate if you are will, uh, able to uh, help me out there. 
Uh, I would appreciate it very much. Uh, so please consider one of those many ways to support. Um, it would be cool. Um, I have an Amazon wish list. You could buy something off my Amazon wish list. And then like, once I finish this, because as soon as this came in, I was like, oh, I'm building it. But the next thing I build, I've got a bunch of high grades right now, just waiting, like a, literally like a bunch of high grades. But I would say, no, I'm not building anything in my backlog yet. I'm going to build something that you bought for me because you bought something off my Amazon wish list. I've got Lego sets. I've got some other battle log kits that I haven't picked up yet. Um, high grades, master grades, inexpensive kits, incredibly expensive kits. Kits that you're like, why is this $54? It shouldn't be, uh, but it is. So, okay. Why is the double zero, uh, the virtue double zero, $103. It's a huge, big, chonky kit, but why is it that much money? I don't know, but it is. Uh, a bunch of stuff on there. Uh, and as I said, if you purchase something from there, it'll jump the queue and I will build it before I build other things. Uh, that is my promise to you. Uh, and the alternative to US to sorry, the alternative to my Amazon wish list, because using Amazon, I don't enjoy it either. Um, is you could if you wanted to buy a gift card to USA Gundam store and then send me a DM on Twitter with that gift card code. And then I'll use that gift card code and I'll buy something from USA Gundam store. Like that is, that is an, that is an option that we've got. We got that. If we wanted to, uh, you could do that. Um, all right, let's see. A couple more links. I got a discord. If you want to support me and not spend any money, you could join my discord. I post build photos. People post stuff they're working on. It's very chill. Sometimes there are no posts in a day. Other times there are like five posts. It's pretty great. Um, okay. A couple video links to share with you. Pat Bear's Anime Club. Uh, this past episode was my awards for the year. It was giving out like the Anime 2021 awards for like best worst name, best initial D reference, uh, best show that I'll never see, stuff like that. Uh, check it out. I think it's pretty good. Um, the best of Build With Bear is a clip program. Uh, this one is me being mad about how much Gary sucks. Gary Oak from uh, Pokemon. He just says some real insensitive shit in this little clip, and I got mad about it. And then, of course, the improvised postmortem from Pax Unplugged 2021. It literally happened on Saturday, and now it's on YouTube, in case you missed it. And I I'll point this out here. I asked, and they delivered the uh, the contractor that was working you know, for, for the convention, did picture-in-picture picture so people could see myself and my guests lovely faces and also saw the slides because sometimes they don't get to see the slides on the twitch version which is this is a rip for up because i didn't have someone record it separately so i think that's great i would love that anytime in the future for improvised postmortem it's very unlikely that it'll ever happen again uh it one time happened to for pouring it and it was rad that it did um uh that's why i started paying eric uh to just do his own version uh anyway i'm gonna talk about some anime or sorry i'm gonna talk about some manga and we're gonna get back to building this kit and then we'll talk about some video games and hear about what you're all getting into and all that i'm gonna drink a little water and then we're gonna get into it so let me hit the old dramatic that is the dramatic music uh, and now we're back to building. Um, all right. Both of these are about a person who is uh, weak and is going through some shit. These are both that genre. Neither of these are isekai, both of them, but they're both fantasy. And I, and I like one way more than I like the other. Uh, and we'll start with uh, Ori of the Dragon Chain heart in the mind uh and this was a this was a rough one there's a lot of like self-loathing and like bot like feeling awful um which is often a trait in the like kicked out of the hero's party um you know because they've just been like manipulated into feeling worthless uh and then like they have a ch someone comes along that is just like no you're 
talented. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, so this is a similar to that, but this is like in school. So we got this dude and we're, we're, we're kind of learn as it goes, what's going on with our main guy, but he and his uh, best friend and his fiance are all attending this academy. And part of his thing is like, she's top tier. I'm doing all right. I want to support her in her endeavors and like be there for her and like be her rock, which is, you know, okay. Uh, well, that he's also bad. Uh, there's some kind of mental, but maybe spiritual block on him and he can't get rid of these. He's like, it says Ori of the Dragon Chain. He is chained. Like, in his mind, he can see these chains, these like chains that are like holding him back, that are making it like suppressing his abilities. Like, he. He can't use magic. Uh, and he's... So he's focusing on swordsmanship because he can still do swordsmanship, but he doesn't have, like, enhancement magic that he should be able to have. Uh, and he is considered, like, garbage and the bottom tier. And you're like, well, I mean, he's doing his best and it'll be okay, right? He's still got his best friend and, uh, and his fiance, right? No. Uh, they start dating. And she starts telling people that, you know, our, our main character, like, cheated on uh, him and, you know, and, and is awful and all this stuff. And people were like, oh, re really? But, like, they don't have any evidence about that? Like, they can't. But everyone believes her and doesn't believe him. And they're like, no, this definitely happened. And it's one of those things where, like, we don't quite know why that's happening. But, like... Yeah, so this dude is already just feeling rotten, and it's it's really rough on him. Um, but he does have one thing going for him. He in training on his own, he came across this woman who lives alone and is a swordmaster, and so he learns like Eastern style like sword fighting, which is meant to be fought against monsters, not uh, other humans. Uh, and his natural abilities work really well. Like the chains that bind him don't really stop that uh, him learning martial arts or like that kind of sword fighting. Uh, and then he somehow like his switch gets flipped and he starts to just, just where we're at right now with the comic. He's just starting to uh, be able to at least temporarily remove the chains that are binding him. He's just starting to figure that out. It's going to take a little while before he can. Because he also fucking defeated a dragon. He uh, he defeated a mythical dragon in the dragon realm. And now he's a dragon slayer. And so he's going to be incredibly strong. But also, uh, he still doesn't have magic. So it, it's interesting. I mean, a lot of it is like his like fears and his resentment. And then there's this larger story element of like what happened to him? Why did it happen to him? Why don't people believe him? What happened with with the girl that he had been, you know, like a lot of it feels like his fault because he's never really talked about it, but also what's her deal and what's going on there? I don't know. There's a lot to it. I've liked it a lot. Ori of the Dragon Chain, Heart and the Mind. I, I recommend it. Um, and I'll say right off the bat. I don't recommend the second manga that I've been reading, which is after being banished for having the trash skill gotcha, I came to my senses and broke off relations with my selfish childhood friend. And there's more to that title, but we just went with that one. Um, so this is uh, every motherfucking every story like this. Um this dude is an overpowered main character, but nobody believes that he's overpowered. So he gets banished to the lower realm uh, because he got the legendary, the unknown skill gotcha. And then he can't use it. It doesn't, nothing happens when he tries to use gotcha. Nothing happens at all because he needs points in order to use it because it's literally a gotcha pawn. But he doesn't have any points because he hasn't defeated any monsters. He has to defeat monsters in the lower realm. But once he does that, he's instantly like learns all these skills and he has all these commands of things. And he's like, um, he could do all this shit. 
including like build he makes a house like with his skills he uh gets himself some uh companion familiars uh he's doing a whole lot of cool shit um and basically uh there's also this thing of like he was treated poorly by his father and his brothers he was banished for that um uh, he had a terrible relationship with his childhood sweetheart. They weren't sweethearts. Uh, it was a gir- you know a girl that decided that they were going to be together because she wanted to have power over him. Maybe she was trying to protect him some- at some point, but mostly was just being awful. And he was like, he tried to push her away, which made her more interested in him. Uh, because she- he was like, you don't want to spend any time with me. I'm awful. Uh, everyone hates me. Uh, this won't be good for you. Okay, so which hand are we going to use? Um, I think we're going to do B28. B27 and 28. Yeah, I think we're going to do hand 28. Let's get that going. Um, uh, yeah, and of course, there's a, there, like he, you know, part of it was like, oh, he, he never had any friends. Well, he did have one friend. He does have one person. And she's one of the people with like, apparently, here's the big twist or it's not a big twist um uh, an oracle says the monsters will be invading the the upper world where everyone lives soon there will be monsters coming and the only way to fight the monsters is to have uh a unified front of the three great powers the saintess the swords master and the person with the gotcha skill and so the king is just like Cool. So where's your son? Because we heard he got the gotcha skill. And they're like, uh, shit. He got banished because we thought he was lying about his skill being good. And it's like, oh, well, then you have to go and um, get him. And of course, his brother tries to enslave him. And uh, it is heavily implied that his younger, or that his older brother gets murdered, uh, which is fun. Uh, there's a lot of trauma to work through, but it's not done particularly well. None of it's done particularly well. Um, I think you get the, the vibe that I, I'm putting out. Uh, this is not a good uh, manga, and I don't recommend it, and I wouldn't encourage you to uh, to read it. Um, it was rough at first, so I gave it. I tried to give it the benefit of the doubt because I was like, this could actually be pretty fun. Uh, I've read other Gachapon uh, stories um, where, like, you know, like, that's kind of fun, especially if there's, like, a lot of luck involved. This isn't really luck. He's just, like, I kill a bunch of monsters, I get a bunch of points, uh, and then hopefully I get the the uh, skills I need. And I was just like, okay, I'm good. I think I'm good. Uh, all right, we got one arm done and one hand done here, so we'll move on to the other one. Um, So yeah, I don't recommend basically at all after being banished for having the trash skill gotcha. I came to my senses and broke off relations uh, with my selfish childhood friend. Um, Yeah, I I don't think it's going to be good. So I would say if you are looking for something to check out, that is not not recommended. Your friend Pat doesn't think it's good. But Ori and the Dragon Chain, I think it's kind of cool. Also the art for Ori is pretty damn strong. I was uh, I was a big fan of it. And that's it for manga. Um I didn't outside of playing Killer Queen, I didn't play much video games. Last night I played some Halo when I got back here and got my room set back up cuz I missed playing Halo. I also been playing Hearthstone. Um uh I've gotten a little bit into the single player but not a lot with Halo. I've mostly been sticking to multiplayer trying to play with crew. Uh, because my fear is that some of them are going to get busy around the holidays or move on to other things. And so I am trying to enjoy the fact that we have a Halo crew right now, you know, you know, knowing that eventually we will not have a Halo crew anymore. So I'm just been like kind of focusing on that. Uh, what are y'all playing? Anybody playing any games, uh, checking out anything out there, uh, watching any TV and movies, anything like that? Let me know. Uh, what you're checking out, because I'm always interested in hearing about what you're into. Um, uh, I've been playing 
some of the update today i played some of the the latest update to power wash simulator because i am trying to unlock some stuff to look at it because that's wednesday's game i'm playing power wash simulator the, and looking at the update this coming wednesday uh on stream that'll be the next stream this week so um i'm at least trying to get one more location opened up uh because right now i have the monster truck the cat monster truck and the uh ferris wheel and i believe there's something out of that hey we just got raided from flip flop slap fight welcome um uh lord creston says i finished up the second job in power wash simulator nice so yeah so you finished the ferris wheel uh oh no we are sneaking in your cave you're welcome welcome to the cave welcome to the bear cave folks um happy to have you here uh lashbrook says i'm spending three months most of the day playing inscription hell yeah uh, and then Dirty says, finally got into Final Fantasy XIV for the first time in a week today after a three-hour queue. Yeah, um, there's never been a better time to get into Final Fantasy except for all the times you could actually play Final Fantasy. But I'm glad you got in. Uh, the Ferris wheel was a bit tough for the final 25%. Yeah, I'm, I'm not expecting to like nail that one right off the bat. Uh, I need enough money to get the new washer. Like That's what I'm working towards is getting getting all that gear and power wash simulator but we'll be checking those out uh i'll, I'll play more of it and then we'll be playing that on wednesday so it'll be fun um oh no i just dropped a piece so the nice thing is it'll be very easy to find because it's this color uh flip-flop says hey hello mr bear sorry to have missed you last week but i'm here now well welcome and also don't worry about it Come and go as you please. Watch when you want to watch. Uh, you're welcome, and I'm happy to have you here. Give me one second, folks. I'm going to talk loudly as I attempt to... Uh, yes, here we go. Easy to find. Swing that back around. Uh, as I said, easy to find on carpet. Very bright, colorful. Um, yeah. Um, I'm really still really digging Halo. It's just a pleasure, pleasure to, to to do. Um, and Hearthstone, um, there was an expansion pretty recently, uh, and I, uh, I have been playing that. There was a uh, a couple cards that made my favorite deck a little easier to play, so that has been nice. Uh, one, not not my absolute favorite deck, but one of my favorite decks is a uh is evolve shaman and there are a couple cards the mini expansion had a really good card for that and then there's been a uh another expansion that has been good for that as well or another card in the, in the most recent expansion so i'm playing that a lot yeah this is in right okay and i need a 28 um let's see uh jerry says i locked the new washer and the uh springy head for it how do you get more money after the career stuff is is uh, is what dirty when you're done with the career stuff you gotta wait for them to be more levels there's no new way to earn money um so it yeah it is tied to it uh the only other thing you could do would be to delete your local stuff and start over and then spend your money more, more wisely in the first time around but yeah I don't believe there's any way to earn additional currency outside of just playing uh, through the career mode. Um, all right. This other one went on perfect, so. Nope. Got this on backwards. That's right. That's what's going on. All right, give me a second here. I, uh, I have been trying with... The the Halo multiplayer on Xbox One, but sometimes it always displays give me a headache. I think it's the lighting. Oh, that's a shame. Sorry to hear that. Yeah, did I put this on? I did. I put this on wrong. There we go. This is the way it's supposed to go on. And then this should theoretically... Yeah, okay. I had put the arm on wrong, and now it's on right. So I'm going to panel line this before we uh, put this uh, together here, but we'll get that going. Uh, you can see the volcano people text you about from the top of the Ferris wheel. Ooh, that's a good call or question. I'll, I'll keep a look at that. Um, that is good to know. Yes, the volcano that they may or may not be throwing cats into. There's a lot of weird, weird lore in Power Wash Simulator. 
from the weirder ones. But the cat monster truck is fun. The kitty monster truck is fun to, to wash. So I'm having fun with that. And I haven't gotten a lot of, I've gotten a lot of like the around the Ferris wheel and not so much like the structure of the Ferris wheel, but I bet that's going to take forever to do. But that'll be Wednesday. Wednesday, I like doing Power Wash Simulator because it's just like a very chill stream. Uh, it's a good stream to like catch up and hang out with people. So we'll be doing that. That won my Patreon poll as what to do. So we'll be doing that. I have to figure out what I'm doing for the rest of the month. I really do need to figure out um, what to do around Christmas. I, um, I'll i know by Wednesday what the rest of my schedule for this month is. I have to put some thought into it tomorrow. Um, I think I'm going to do a Christmas day e evening stream like that's one the, on the 25th i think i am gonna do that i definitely will be streaming like the 22nd and the 23rd like every other day but i might uh i might do uh a new year's eve instead of a new year's day stream so i might stream on december 31st which is a friday instead of saturday the first or i might do a new year's day like because i've been doing new year's Eve streams a lot in the past but i'm like well i don't want to stream two days in a row with model kit building if i can avoid it maybe i will just like do a new year's day evening like i don't know i i have to oops, i gotta i'm not done with this what am i doing here uh i have to think about it I, I i gotta do some thinking tomorrow about the rest of my month um is that why the mayor is dipping out of his freshly washed houseboat? Cat is supposedly spotted by the volcano. Okay. Uh, have you checked out the lawnmower sim? Watching that is hella satisfying. Yeah, I I played a demo of that. I didn't love it, but uh, but uh, but it is a it is a fun uh, game to like watch like play. Like I've watched some let's plays of it and and kind of enjoyed that. But actually, me playing it, I wasn't super into. Um. Let's see. Uh, there is a model kit building simulator coming out. Um, and uh, in February. And I am going to try to get code for that. To like cover it on stream. Because that feels like a game I should definitely be checking out. I mean, if, if I can't get coverage of it. Or if I can't get it like a, uh, a code for it. At the very least, I will probably buy it because that does feel like a thing I would want to play on stream. Because um, it's a fun idea that it, that it exists. So, I'll probably you Sorry. Um, very on brand. Yes, the idea that like on a Wednesday I'm going to like play a model kit building simulator is very, very on, on brand for me. Um, uh disco tech announced a bunch of stuff today like blu-ray releases of skull face bookseller honda san oh nice so, uh, skull Fa face bookseller honda san is a fantastic anime i don't i don't need it on blu-ray but that is great uh next should be youtube simulator i believe there is a but it, it maybe is a bad youtube sim uh look at you know like a tube content creator simulator i believe is a thing um, but I believe it is like a parody of those and not actually good. Um, uh, and Blu-ray releases for the uh, Jahil White Sonic cartoon and Street Sharks. I mean, the Saturday, well, listen, so there's, there's the weekday morning, which is the, uh, uh, Jahil White one, uh, YouTube streamer, yo, YouTube streamer one and two. Uh, there is one called something like My YouTube Life. Yeah, I, that doesn't surprise me. Um, no, uh, the Sonic cartoon, The Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, which is the uh, Jelly White one. Or, Well, there's two of them. Because he's the voice in both of them. There is the cute one where it's Sonic and Tails having fun. And then there is the ABC Saturday Morning Sonic, which is like the dark thing where it's just like, Shit went bad. The world is fucked. Uh, Robotnik has basically won. He's robotizing people, and it is not a cool time. Uh, so, depending on which one, I wouldn't get the Blu-ray either, but I think I'd be more interested in one over the other. Uh, also, the uh, I should say that the best gag in um, 
in Sonic in that uh, in the Sonic Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog is that his license is uh, says Sonic T Hedgehog at one point. He has a driver's license. Why would Sonic need to drive is, is its own thing. But the fact that his middle initial was T for the uh, I thought I, I remember at the time thinking that was a good gag. that I liked that joke. It's like, oh no, it's Adventure of Sonic. Okay. Yeah. Again, I don't dislike either of them. Uh, I think they were, they both had good things. Uh, you know, it, one of them really puts forth the emphasis on Sonic's love of chili dogs. The other puts on the heart of Sonic uh, and the sadness of, like, trying to figure out what's going on and how you can save people and, you know, a bunny that's a cyborg and having, you know, like saving your dad, but not really saving your dad and like all kinds of shit. A lot going on in that one. The dark, dark series. Um, all right, we're done with the top half of this kit. We got some time left, so we'll get into uh, legs. We're going to make some feet for this kit. Is hey the live lance got feet so we gotta we gotta get it some feet so it's got some feet. Um, let's see other things. Anything else going on with me? Um, YouTube's doing a thing again where it um wants me to watch van life videos and I also want to watch van life videos so I'm watching a lot of van life videos. Um. Which, you know, thankfully got some travel in. When I wasn't going anywhere, re barely leaving the house just to go for walks and stuff, um, it, uh, those kind of programs really hit me. They, hit, they really, like, mess with me. I'm just being like, yeah, Pat, what if you got, like, a van, like a co converted to a van, and just, like, drove? It's like, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not doing any of that. Same way that like people were like, I could see myself being in a tiny house, and I could be like, I could see myself losing my mind in a tiny house. Sure, just completely going off the, going just completely off my rocker. Yeah, I could see that happening. I want to lose out on Pat, your friend Pat, and be like, yeah, no, you know, he got himself a tiny house out in the woods, and somehow managed to get Google Fiber out there, but just like. Lost touch with everything and with reality. The end of Pat. But on the plus side, his house could be put on wheels and you could drive it somewhere because it was technically also a trailer. No, I'm good. Also, I know myself. I can sleep anywhere. Like, I can fall asleep in like any bed, no problem. But I don't think I could fall asleep like stealth. Like live it like you know stealth uh van life it's just like oh, i parked on this i parked like in this like a uh, parking lot and i've got these things so people don't know that i'm in here asleep i was just like no everyone knows and they're all mad about it i would not be able to handle that i would be i'd be out the door very fast in that particular instance that is not for me i am not that that guy I would be freaked the fuck out about like that kind of life. I just want a good bed. Uh, yes, that Farley life. Like, yeah, in a van down by the river. I don't know. There's a there's a Canadian uh, uh, streamer that I uh, or a YouTuber that I check out, and he does a lot of like stealth camping and like you know, it's like oh, I I did car camping. Uh, in a parking lot next to the police station. And I'm just like, I would not do that. Or I, I'm doing this, like, I got this, like, hammock tent that I'm going to be, and I'm going to do self-camping, like, in the median. And I'm just like, cool, I'm not doing that shit. Enjoy. Not for me. No thanks. That sounds not fun. Cool, but that's not the life for me. If that's your thing, if you're like, oh yeah, Pat, I'm currently converting uh, a Springer van into the ultimate van life vehicle, and I'm going to hit the road, like, hell yeah. 
enjoy it. Uh, just know that you should just go like the biggest thing I have learned from van life videos is um, beds that like can like they're like, oh, it's a couch and it converts to in a bed. It doesn't convert all the time. Like, and I know that from like day beds, people just like, like, no, it actually doesn't. It, it, it can do that. But most of the time you just leave it as a bed because you've got too much shit to move around and you don't want to do it every day. Um, but yeah, uh, there's a dude in upstate New York who does like cool, uh, video like conversions. Like, oh, I, I converted this RV. Uh, this is my house now. It was, you know, it was originally like a trailer and I've really made it cool and I'm doing all this cool shit. And it'll just be like, and here's a shot with me without my shirt on. And I'm just like, hey man, I know you don't need to have a shirt on right now, but like you also don't have to remind us of that. Cool dude. I don't know, he makes some cool shit. So I do watch them. Um, uh, I hear about that and think of the guy who worked at Google and lived in the back of a moving truck in Google's campus lot. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, people, people do shit like that. Yeah. Um, uh, there was a, this dude literally got fired for this. So I think that was kind of cool, but there was a guy, uh, who, uh, was doing YouTube videos and, and he was like, well, you know, I'm on call and like I live at work for, for the job uh, uh, and I'm there like two weeks on, two weeks off or three weeks on, one week off or something like that. And so he's like, so the time when I wasn't there working and I wasn't living there, uh, I just decided I was going to live in my truck and he was making YouTube videos about it. And then the place he got, there's like, hey, we're not mad that you were living in your truck. We're mad that you were making YouTube videos about it. And I was like, oh. He, it's like, and he was just like, oh, shit, okay, oops. Uh, kind of like how the UK version of Gordon Ramsay's Kitchen Nightmares uh, had a shot of him changing shirts every episode. Um, yeah, because it's just like, hey, I'll, yeah, here's just me without my shirt on. Check this out. And just like, all right, dude, come on. We don't, we don't need that. We don't need that. We're good. Um. I will say that I originally was just watching one video series about uh, canal life in the UK, speaking of the UK. Uh, and now I watch, um, I think like five of them. Uh, there's are like, there's like different couples. There's a queer couple. That's real fun. There's just like, and there's like solo people. And it's just like, it's very clear that like one of them was doing it before cruising the cut. But now a bunch of them do it because Cruising the Cut was so successful as a series that people are, or as a YouTube, that people, other people are doing it now. And it's pretty funny that there's like, oh, so, yeah, I'm getting on this. Um, but I, that was just like a thing I never thought about. It like never occurred to me that was just a thing you could do. It's just like, yeah, I live on a boat and then I got docked in different places and then I just go cruising down canals in in the uk and it's like oh that's just like a thing you can do yeah totally um here's my question of the night says flip flop slap fight uh, i know what the pens are for uh but do you use special pens for the paneling yes so these are called gundam markers uh literally written right there gundam marker you can see yeah uh, uh yeah that'll probably be better gundam marker uh, I got a pack of three of these. Uh, I have three colors. There's a ton of colors. But mostly I'm using black and gray more than anything. And uh, I have brown for the reds. Um, and like I said, there are a bunch of different colors. There, These are the number two. Uh, so yeah, this is the 200 series. Uh, so there's going to be different ones. But yeah, this is just a little bit of ink there. Um Gundam markers are meant for this kind of plastic and doing this kind of work. Uh, you could use other things, I'm sure, but these are going to make it so that like it's going to fill in the line spots and then you can pretty easily clean it up. Um, uh, there's some plastic that doesn't work well on, I believe, from like other kinds of kits, but I don't really build those kits, so I haven't run across that problems. Um, there are like special pens that like you like tap it 
and like the ink squeezes out and fills in all the gaps um and i forget that what those pens particularly are called but those seem like the step up from this particular kind of pen but i have not used that um yes uh last because there's some people like using uh pigma microns so crayons not recommended no i would say crayons are probably not what you're going to want to use yeah you don't want to use crayola uh, anything pretty much um but yeah i know there's like a couple like different kinds of pens and i haven't experimented with them i'm barely into this this is still compared to the years i've been building especially the years i've been building on stream uh this is still relatively new for me using pens but i really do like them i think they add a lot especially a kit that has a lot of weight like this does like i just think the head uh and the chest look so much better uh you'll see in the photograph that i'll put on the my discord and also twitter but i think the uh this white this kit just really pops with a little bit of uh, a marker color so i'm really pleased uh you know like i said when i first started doing this i wasn't even doing stickers that often so this has been like yeah exper i would call this experimentation uh i'm now i'm like there's no way i wouldn't do this this is going to be what i do for every kit from now on like there's no way i wouldn't um panel line in the future let's see other stuff um i mean mostly this is just end of the year and the racer is just clean up yes so some people use um uh q-tips or you know like uh, cotton swaps some people use tissue uh, you can do that way. I like using the eraser because it's just something finite I can have in my hand. And if it gets really gross, I can just uh, slice it away um, or just run it or whatever. But I like it getting in there. Uh, I will sometimes use a Q-tip uh, or a tissue for really tight spots. But for the most part, um, the eraser is just like, it's just to clean it up, get the excess off there. Um, because I'm doing, as I, I, I often say, um, uh, I do a quick and dirty method. That is my that is my mo. Is the quick and dirty? Uh, just get in there, hit it with a bunch of ink, clean up the bunch of ink, move on. All right, so we're doing the legs now, and we'll start with this lovely gold. Just a absolutely beautiful gold that we're gonna put on here. So we need C two C one eleven C two eleven part here. And again, I can do these all at the same time, uh, or both legs at the same time, and then I'll just go and clean it up. Great. Uh, yeah, so the rest of my year, like, you know, I had packs. That was the thing I was most looking forward to. Now it's about, like, kind of just relaxing a bit, end of year shenanigans. Um, I don't have a top 10 list running anywhere. I am doing my anime of 2021 top 10 list, my own personal list. So I'll be doing that and that'll be on my YouTube. The next, uh, that'll be up on Monday. Um, finishing the, uh, uh, somebody asked this, uh, cause every year my Wednesday series becomes a, a different series. I do a different series every year, but this year I did two series because I didn't like doing the one I was doing that I switched to best of build with bear. Uh, I will be ending that at the end of this year and then next year starting a new project, um, which is, again, just going to be um, uh, some kind of uh, video series, a weekly Wednesday series. Uh, that will be the first week in January I will debut that new series. Uh, name pending uh, because I, I know what it is, but I want to keep that uh, a secret. But yeah, I'll have a new one of those coming out uh ranking of ska no i'm not it won't have anything to do with, with ska i don't think it'll have anything to do with ska i mean it could but i don't believe it will uh you know i'm just working on a new uh weekly wednesday series uh that will be that'll be good i think it will work out pretty good we'll see um okay so we're gonna do that we're gonna do that, we're gonna do that. i need oh I need C212 and B12. Okay. C212. Where are you? There it is up here. 
Uh, everything has to do with Scott. I mean, yeah, look, Scott's going to be there. It is, it's still a thing, but I, uh, I guess that it will be without being the focus. I guess it will be there will be Scott. I guess I could say. Um, again, it won't be like that's not the plan. Maybe it'll happen that way. I don't know. Yeah, most of this is just going to be me like hanging out. Uh. It's pretty tough read, but there's an article by Amanda Huber about Brody Lee's checkout. Yeah, I have not checked that out yet. Um, I, I I'm probably going to. Uh, I I and, and yeah, I would want to be in the right mindset for for that. Um, but I I would like to. Uh, I got a response from Drew. Uh, speaking of wrestlers, I got a response from Drew Gulak. Uh, because I made a reference to. Uh, you know, the fact that there's a lot of talk about PowerPoint and I haven't seen that much PowerPoint since Drew Gulak was trying to make a better 205 live to which he was like only 30, whatever slides. Cause I'm sure he's getting that from a lot of people. Cause he, one of his gimmicks for a while there was he's the guy that makes PowerPoint slides. That's PowerPoint. Cause it, cause nothing makes an audience Ooh, better than being like, I know what everybody wants, a PowerPoint presentation. And I was just like, no, get out of here. Such a good bit of business. It's a really easy joke. I miss his PowerPoint at 205 Live being what it was for a good year or so. Yeah. Uh, yeah, last break. I mean, like, the thing about True Gulak is that he, the thing I've always really appreciated is like, he's a, an incredible mat technician. Um, and like a natural born heel, great dude. We've met on uh, several occasions. Great dude. Uh, good, good, like ring psychology can really play the heel, but also all of the stuff. Oh yes. The, the Drew and Danielson, like Drew is like Brian Danielson's like coach and like, but also like protege somehow, like they were both to each other, uh, was really fun. And I wish they had like really gone through that because that was in my mind that was supposed to be helping uh drew gulak more than it ended up doing it definitely helped daniel bryan to have something to do but it should have been huge um for for drew gulak um but the thing is all of that like you know no fly zone don't do flips and all that other stuff like don't jump off whatever stay on the mat um Drew Gulak can do all that shit. He can be a high flyer. He just like decided that that was the character approach he was going to do was that he doesn't do that shit, uh, but he can totally do that shit. Um, and so I always, I always found that really funny. Oh, people don't even know. They don't know how fucking versatile he is. He can do all those styles. He just chooses not to. Uh, I mean, in the long run, he's protecting his body because his the style he works at WWE is fast paced, but it's not uh, it, it's not risky. So he can uh, he can go a lot longer, uh, which is great. But I'm I was always like, when's he gonna bust that out? When's he gonna like get on the you know? When's he gonna get on the second rope? When's he gonna go off the third rope? Like when are we gonna see Drew be Drew? Uh, I'm very excited about when he eventually pulls that shit out. He totally can. That was always thing I really liked about like uh, now it, it it does parts of El Generico feel not particularly great, mainly because it's just like, I don't know, we're older. And so we can be like, I don't know. I don't know about some of that. But um, the part that always was great was the fact that Sami Zayn didn't change his wrestling style under that mask. He was just Sami Zayn, the wrestler. Um, but uh, uh, Gulak, when he was under a mask in, uh, in, a, in different promotions, he fought in that style. And you wouldn't have known that that was him. Um, it was really incredible at the time. I thought that's what the no-fly zone stuff was leading. I thought eventually it was leading to him like pulling off the moves that you're just like, wait, Drew Gulak can do that shit? You're like, yeah, dude. Drew Gulak, Drew Gulak is really good at that shit. Let me get 
getting trying to get these legs together we're going to wrap up in a little bit we'll, we'll go on a raid we always end the stream with right especially because we we got raided so we do want to uh, uh share the love by uh by going on our own raid uh in a little bit so we will do that and we'll go hang out with somebody who's doing some cool shit on the internet here you know maybe it'll be a model kit builder maybe it'll just be someone uh you know doing something playing a video game or whatever or doing a talk show hopefully it'll be somebody who's going to stream for a little while because every once in a while we go and raid and then the person's like and i'm wrapping things up and it's just like no no that's rude uh i did get to see hook's debut i wasn't watching live because i was i had a lot going on this weekend uh and also there was not near a tv um but i have since seen uh hook's debut um yeah, who would have thunk the guy that's been training for a long time uh, that really wanted to be a wrestler for many years uh, who also had his first televised match with someone who is very good in the ring working with people. Uh, yeah, who, who would have thought that that was going to be a really solid, good, fun-to-watch match? But yeah, I mean, couldn't ask for a better first opponent. Really took care of him. Looked like a million bucks. Uh, you know, it's been, it's been great to have him. I do love that they're like, oh, he's all elite. And it's just like, he's been there. So the, basically, like, by saying, like, now Hook is officially all elite, you're like, so before he was just under, like, a per appearance, he's been there a lot. Like, he hasn't been wrestling, but he's been hanging out. They all just was just like, oh, yeah, now we'll, now we'll pay you. Now you're not just... Taz's son. You're also a wrestler. But it's good. Happy for him. Looks good in there. All right. I'm going to, we're going to keep going with this in the future. We got a lot done with this kit. Uh, seems like all the folks with judo training really transition in ring super well. I mean, yeah, judo is certainly, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and, uh, and judo are combat sports that you can and you know this is similar to amateur or wrestling can you can transition transition with it um but yeah seeing the taz plex is cool and weird and great um and you know uh all right we are gonna raid we're gonna go raid somebody i'm gonna figure out who that's gonna be i don't know yet i don't know who we're gonna go hang out with we're gonna find out in just a moment uh, cause that's a thing we do at the end of these streams, as I said. So let me go see who's doing shit that I want to go hang out with. Who are we going to go hang out with now? Let's see. Oh, when did... Okay, I mean, I'm going to go see, um, when my buddy started streaming, because he doesn't usually stream at night, so... I'm going to go check out to see if he said when he started doing it. Uh, okay, so no webcam for, for him, but he is playing Path of Exile. And we're going to go raid um, uh, uh, Adam Savadan, who is just... Adam's just great. But yeah, like I said, he's not doing webcam, which is fine. He doesn't have to. It's his business. But we're going to go give uh, uh, Adam, a.k.a. Seatbats... Uh, Seatbats, not Seatbats, Seatbats, a... Uh, I'm late, but here for the raid. Hope you had a good stream. I did have a good stream. Mm, John, thanks for being here. Uh, I appreciate it. And yeah, this was a fun one. Uh, this kit is coming together. It's coming along great. It's looking good. Uh, and I'm looking forward to working on it more. And yeah, we're going to go on a raid. We're going to go uh, give a raid to Adam, who is just great. Uh, he's not using his webcam, and that's fine, because you'll hear his voice. He's a great dude. So feel free to come along this. Learn a little bit about Path of Exile. Uh, cause he's really excited about playing it. And that's the thing I'm excited about is that he's excited. Uh, but yeah, see bats is good people. Uh, so we're going to go on that raid. Thanks everybody for having a, uh, being here and I'll see you in the next stream. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. 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 Goodbye.